Today, successful people rely on a very sophisticated communication device. It's small enough to carry, yet make sure they're never out of touch. It's a pager from the leader, Hutchison. Pagers were the must-have communication devices of the 80s and 90s, allowing instantaneous one-way messages to be sent to a user anywhere. People were no longer tied to the wired phone network to communicate. At the peak of their popularity, there were over 61 million pages in use worldwide. However, with the rise of mobile phones and SMS technology in the late 90s and early 2000s, pages quickly became a thing of the past in the consumer world. Still, pages are widely in use today, employed by predominantly emergency services as a backup to mobile networks. To add a modern element to a mostly forgotten technology, I've built a pager out of a Raspberry Pi, which sends emails over the internet to alert users. This video documents the development process as well as demonstrating the completed product. Before we attempt to build a pager, we must understand the background of the technology. Pagers work, like any wireless communication, over radio waves. A simple scan of the airwaves shows a number of different types of communication. This range from AM and FM commercial radio. Air traffic control. Emergency communication. As well as digital television. Does very little for one of these. You can even see signals from CB radios. There are also a number of digital data services, including pager signals. To pick up the radio signals, we need a radio receiver. This is where the RTL SDR comes handy. Originally mass produced as a digital TV tuner, it was discovered that by using a custom driver, any type of signal between 30 and 1700 MHz could be received by interfacing with the RTL 2832U chip on the dongle. Due to the fact that these devices are mass produced and use software processing requiring no expensive hardware, one can pick up a device for less than $20. This is my RTL SDR. To get a better signal, I've modified the antenna cable to connect to any indoor or roof antenna. As you can see, my equipment has been well used and has aged significantly, but still works fine. The computer to do the signal processing will be the Raspberry Pi. The RTL SDR just plugs into one of the USB slots on the Pi and after installing drivers should be good to go. The first step to creating a pager is to find a signal to receive. There is only one national pager network in service in Australia. This is the Hutchison Pager Network, operated by Vodafone. A quick search on the ACMA database of radio licenses shows the frequency of the radio signal to be 148.6375 MHz. Using my SDR Play RSP1, which achieves better reception than the RTL SDR through more advanced components and an external antenna, it was confirmed that there was a pager service operating on that frequency. It was now possible to start decoding. My original plan was to use a piece of software called GNU Radio to create a signal flowchart receiving the signal and outputting binary data. However, during initial testing, it was discovered that on the Raspbian OS, it would crash when trying to execute a flowchart. Eventually, I found that Ubuntu worked, and I was able to begin development. This is what I was able to come up with, and when looking at the waveform, I was able to see binary data. However, the console constantly spat out O's, showing that the Pi was maxing its tiny CPU and didn't have enough resources to finish decoding the data. With further research, it was discovered that GNU Radio was not designed for low power CPUs, which meant I had to find an alternative. Fortunately, there were two programs specifically designed to solve this problem. The first was RTL-FM, which was part of the RTL-SDR driver and is a lightweight audio decoding application. The audio from RTL-FM was then piped into another program called Multimon-NG, which is a data decoding program. It compiled just fine from the source code and as it can be seen, supports POXAG 512, 1200 and 2400, which are the protocols used on the Hutchison Pager network. No more than 50% of the CPU is used at any time with these two programs. My first test resulted in no pager signal being seen. When I compared the signal with my other SDR, it was found that the RTL SDR had drifted frequency and was only receiving half the signal, most likely due to age. This drift had to be counteracted by downshifting the frequency to 148.631 MHz. After this was done, pages started to be received. 
When looking through the messages, a majority of them were from emergency services, but there were still other individuals and companies using pages to communicate, showing they still have a use today. There were also a number of test messages sent every minute to verify network uptime. When looking at the received messages, they are embedded within other information and will need to be extracted. Each line is a separate message with the details of the message at the start. The line starts with the protocol, which is either POXAG 512 or 1200 on this network, followed by the CAP code, which is essentially an ID number, like a phone number for a mobile. The page message follows. Due to the text being consistently formatted, it will be very easy to process this information. This is the Python script I wrote to process the page and messages. It takes user input for cap codes and destination email before comparing the cap code of each received message to the user's input. When a match is found, it generates an email containing the message to the specified address. Let's see this in action. Upon running the script, it asks for the cap codes to monitor. The program can check for multiple cap codes at a time separated by a comma. The cap codes I'm entering here are test numbers that are sent every minute. I then enter my email address in the second prompt, and messages begin to display on the screen. When a message that matches a cap code is received, it sends an email which is almost immediately delivered in the user's mailbox. Opening the email shows the cap code and message of the page. If we continue waiting, another test page will be sent, which will generate another email. Again, opening this email displays the cap code and the message of the page. And that's pretty much it for my modernized pager. The code used for this project can be found in the description below. Feel free to use it to attempt your project yourself, or try to come up with another interesting way to modernize a pager. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.